Dental implants have truly changed the lives of many patients with complete missing teeth. Treatments revolving around hybrid restorations, all on four approach, and teeth in a day concept have helped millions of patients regain their confidence and have a better quality of life. But unfortunately, many such patients are being inappropriately channeled into a hybrid restoration model. One that is faster, easier, and cheaper, but not necessarily better. Many patients unnecessarily go through traumatic cut down of their jawbone so they can get fitted into a hybrid restoration, overlooking an alternative approach that preserves and augments tissues with much better aesthetic and functional results. So what are your treatment options when it comes to replacement of all of your teeth? And which one is right for you? What is hybridization and how can you avoid it? And are you a candidate for the no bone cut down approach with pink free restorations that will give you a better and more natural looking teeth? I'm Dr. Ryan Kazami and welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. If you're looking for full arch replacement of your teeth, you might find yourself in one of these categories. You might have already lost all your teeth, completely missing teeth, and maybe you're using a denture already, or perhaps you are partially missing teeth, few remaining teeth that may be non-restorable, or perhaps you have all of the teeth, but they're non-restorable due to caries, perhaps gum disease or fractures, and need to be removed. So the question is, what are the options for full arch replacement of your teeth? There are basically three options that are available. We have the removable overdenture supported by implants. We have a fixed hybrid design supported by implants, as well as a fixed bridge, also known as a pink-free approach. Let's take a look at each option. The removable overdenture is essentially a denture with attachments to 224 dental implants. This prosthesis is removable by the patient, and this is how it works. We place two, three, or four implants, and the denture is fabricated with attachments, male-female attachments that snap onto each other, and provides the prosthesis with a relatively good support and retention while the um, prosthesis is removable and easily accessible for hygiene and cleaning by the patient. The aesthetic outcome reasonably good, function also reasonably good, a lot better than a full denture, certainly because of the retention. The second option is known as a fixed hybrid approach. A hybrid, as the name implies, is a combination, is a mixture of a denture and a bridge design supported by four to six dental implants. This restoration design is fixed, and it has a pink prosthetic gum tissue as part of the design. And this is how it works. Four, five, or six dental implants are placed, usually adequate for this type of design. A restoration, a full arch restoration is designed with teeth and the prosthetic gum tissue, which completely is attached to the implants and securely held in place with some micro screws it provides excellent retention, of course, because it's fixed, great function, and patients such as this, showing a lower hybrid uh, prosthesis in place, uh, end up with a very good aesthetic outcome, very comfortable eating and function. Uh, but we do have this pink prosthetic gum tissue, which is necessary in order to replace what has been lost. The third option is the fixed bridge or pink free. This is a bridge supported by six to eight dental implants where it just has teeth. There is no pink prosthetic gum tissue in the design. Of course, it's completely fixed by the supporting implants. And here's how it works. The implants are placed pretty much at the level of where the teeth were. Once the implants are integrated and healed, abutments are placed supporting the crown and bridge. In this case, it's kind of a full arch bridge that's attached to the implants, securely held in place. 
as we said, this is completely a fixed restoration, completely supported by the implants, and it only has the teeth with no pink prosthetic gum tissue. And the reason for that is the patient has adequate bone and gum tissue, and all we're doing is just simply replacing their teeth with this type of restoration. So the question is, which option is appropriate for you? And I think in order to answer this question, it helps to know what category of fixed prosthetic classification you fall under. There are basically three types or three conditions. The first is FP1. These are patients who have had no bone or gum tissue loss, and we're simply just replacing the crown. And it certainly looks most closest to what natural teeth will look like. The second type of patients are people who have had some moderate or mild amount of tissue and bone loss, and now we have to replace the crown and a portion of the root. Teeth appear longer in these situations, mainly because of the lost foundation. And FP3 is the third category where patients have more advanced loss of bone and gum tissue. So when we're replacing the teeth, we have to not only replace the crown, but also the gingiva using this prosthetic gingival uh, uh, design as we discussed. So the question is, which option is appropriate for you? In order to answer that, it's important to understand and determine what is your bone and gum tissue height and which prosthetic classification you fall under. So if we kind of look at this important question, do you have vertical bone and soft tissue loss? If the answer is yes, you fall into a FP2 or FP3 category, which means that there is some level of tissue loss and a remo removable overdenture and a fixed hybrid may be your best option and certainly a good candidate for that. However, if the answer is no and the bone and gum tissue is completely normal, FP1 category, then you could be a candidate for having a fixed bridge or a pink free. If we look at these two options, the fixed implant supported options, which is really what most people want these days. They don't like to have removable prostheses. They want something that's fixed, closer to what natural teeth look like. We have these two options, a fixed bridge and a fixed uh, hybrid. So as we said, the fixed hybrid is really appropriate and ideal for patients who have had some level of bone and gum tissue loss. And that loss can be replaced with a prosthetic uh, gingiva and they can have a very aesthetic and functional outcome. The fixed bridge pain-free approach, more appropriate for FP1 category patients. And this is ideal for those who have had no bone loss. The bone and gum tissue is absolutely normal and all we're doing is just replacing the teeth uh, with the restorations. There is a difference between the two. There is certainly some contrast between the two designs. The fixed hybrid is more difficult to maintain clean because we have this prosthetic gum tissue that sits over the implants, so it can be more challenging to maintain. And also, uh, it's not as natural feeling as what the natural teeth may feel like. It may have a little bit of a prosthetic feel to it. Whereas if we look at the pink free fixed bridge approach, these are much easier to maintain and clean because they're simply crown and bridges around the gum tissue, like almost natural teeth, uh, and that's what they mimic. So this is clearly a more superior option for patients who have the normal level of bone and gum tissue and are the FP1 category. But there's a big problem that's been happening. Because of various trends in implant dentistry, a number of patients are being offered the fixed hybrid approach because it is easy, fast, and cheap. And unfortunately, some patients who are a candidate for the fixed bridge pink free type of treatment are inappropriately converted to a fixed hybrid design. And this is done by cutting down their bone and gum tissue, a process that we call hybridization. So this hybridization is a name that describes the process by which a patient's bone and gum tissue is cut down in order to have them fit into a hybrid restoration design. And this can be inappropriate for some patients who don't necessarily need that. For example, let's take a look at this patient who has all of the teeth, 
They do have recurring caries and non-restorables that do need to be removed. But we see that the patient has a great level of gum tissue, contour, and bone level. Very good tissue uh, in place. If we look at their x-ray, also the bone level has not been compromised. Everything is intact exactly where they need to be. So if we kind of take this patient and put them through the hybridization or conversion process, we're essentially taking their normal bone, we're cutting it down by almost five to seven millimeters, sometimes even more, and we're placing the implants in a deeper level. And the reason this is necessary is to create room for this prosthetic gum tissue, what we call the pink. This is an opposed to providing the patient with an implant supported bridge with no bone cut down. We can simply take the level of the bone exactly where it is, place the implants at the same level, and if anything, augment the missing bone where necessary. This provides us an opportunity to preserve the bone and gum tissue and certainly augment it where we need to. So this hybridization trend, which involves the cutting down of the natural bone and gum tissue, is basically done in order to replace the prosthetic material that's necessary in this type of design. And the reason this is done quite often, as I said earlier, is because it's an easy, fast, and cheap option. And I think that if we take a patient that is an FP1 category with good level of bone and gum tissue, and we hybridize them by cutting down their tissues, we're essentially creating this dental cripples unnecessarily. As we say, the hybridization process requires this cut down of the bone because the hybrid or the fixed hybrid design requires a certain, certain amount of space and room for this prosthetic gum tissue. It requires space. And the question comes up that why is this happening? Why has this become such a trend over the last few years where patients are getting these hybrid uh, prostheses, fixed hybrid prostheses, sometimes unnecessarily? The first is because it's easy. Cutting down the bone takes a lot less skills than preserving and augmenting it. It's also fast. You extract the teeth, you cut the bone down, put in the implants, deliver the hybrid teeth on the same day, a concept that is being called teeth in a day. A patient goes home, certainly happy and, uh, with what they have, but perhaps unnecessarily uh, put through this type of treatment. And the third reason is because it's cheaper, it requires less time, less materials, less skills. However, I will point out that this design is not necessarily that much less costly than doing the pain-free approach or the nine hybridization approach. And we'll talk about that. So I think the point is, if you have a normal amount of bone and gum tissue, you could be a candidate for this pain-free implant supported bridge and a no cut down approach. This is good for FP1 patients, the type one category as we talked about, and requires no reduction. If anything, we have an additive philosophy. If there's any deficiency of tissues, we can augment we preserve, we augment the natural tissues, keep the bone, add to it if necessary. Same thing with gum tissue. This is definitely delivers the most natural aesthetic outcome. And it's also easier to maintain clean. And I think the, the cost is really not that significant. So the cost difference from a fixed hybrid prosthesis. This requires a certain steps, certain principles to be able to do this type of treatment rather than excising and reducing the bone and replacing it with a prosthetic device, we're constantly working on preserving and augmenting. Extraction of the teeth in the atraumatic fashion to hold on to the gum tissue and bone as much as possible. Using partial extraction therapies, techniques like socket shield, submerged root therapies. These are treatments that are designed to leave intentionally part of the tooth in place in order to preserve the bone and gum tissue. Immediate implants help to uh, preserve the architecture, bone and soft tissue grafting when necessary to augment and replace, and creating anatomical restorations that will support the tissue uh, in the long term. 
Again, this comes down to preserving and augmenting the tissue rather than reducing it. So here's a patient that has not, not, had non-restorable teeth that had to be removed. This is a before. And after a treatment, again, following a digital workflow, the proper design of the teeth, selection of the implant position, but more importantly, a non-reduction approach, preserving her gum, preserving her bone, augmenting the areas where we need to, we can deliver a set of teeth that resemble natural teeth more closely and a happier patient in the long term. And here's a patient with a uh, number of implants placed symmetrically on both sides. The bone level is maintained exactly where it is. The implants are positioned where the gum tissue is, so we can achieve a very natural outcome and result. Here's another patient who had a few remaining teeth and a number of missing teeth who was using the partial denture for some time. But the critical point is that the patient had fantastic level of bone and gum tissue, as we can see preserved by his teeth and also in the areas where there are missing teeth. And instead of taking this patient and converting them into a hybrid model, which like I said is easy, fast, and cheap, we can do something better. We can provide them with implants to support a dental bridge preserving the gum tissue and the bone exactly where they are. And when the patient smiles, that's what they show. They show just the teeth and nothing else. There is no prosthetic tissues and there is no gaps. This is easy to clean, easy to maintain, and this can be a very effective long-term uh, uh, treatment for this patient. So my tip for how to avoid getting caught up in this hybridization trend for full arch uh, treatments uh, of um, the teeth replacement are the following. First, it's important to confirm your prosthetic type. Your dentist can help you understand using diagnostic imaging and examination if you're in FP1 category or not. The second, request a prototype restoration for visualization. Taking a digital scan, using a mock-up approach to create a prototype restoration so you can actually visualize this in real life and be able to see the effect of it uh, uh, with your uh, teeth replacement. Third, do not allow bone and gum tissue removal simply to make room for prosthetic gum tissue. That is unnecessary. And request and ask for tissue, re uh, tissue augmentation, tissue regeneration of the areas where it's deficient. The very predictable procedures, both from a bone augmentation and gum tissue uh, restoration that can be done and there is no need to remove them. And if you're unclear and not sure if the fixed hybrid that has been recommended to you is the right way to go, certainly a good idea to get a second opinion and have the diagnostics process done in order to get the right treatment. At the end of the day, we hope that we can deliver what I call a four-dimensional dentistry. These are the type of treatments that impact the patient's life, providing them with what nature had intended, comfortable, aesthetic restorations, and stable and healthy for a very long time to come. And that is really the point and the objective that we should have. Remember, losing all of your teeth should not be a crippling experience. We have the technology, the science, and the skills that are necessary to restore missing teeth, missing bone, and gum tissue, and be able to deliver results that more closely resemble what nature had intended. Faster, easier, and cheaper can turn into longer, harder, and more expensive journeys if the wrong treatment is provided. Regenerative and conservative treatments are clearly superior to a more destructive and invasive procedures. No prosthetics, can ever be as good as your own body. So make sure to ask questions and get more engaged in your own care. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi. See you again soon on the next hints and tips in dentistry.